I have today decided to dismiss with immediate effect all the cabinet secretaries and attorney general of the Republic of Kenya, of the cabinet of Kenya, except the prime cabinet secretary and cabinet secretary for secretary uh, and secretary for and cabinet secretary for foreign affairs and diaspora affairs and of course the office of the deputy president. I will immediately engage in extensive consultations across different sectors and political formations and other Kenyans, both in public and private, with the aim of setting up a broad-based government that will assist me in accelerating and expediting the necessary, urgent, and irreversible implementation of the program that we have, including other radical measures and programs. That was President William Ruto last week when he dismissed uh, 21 cabinet secretaries and the Attorney General, uh, saying that he'll be moving towards uh, reconstituting one. He has also been speaking. Listen to what he said on Saturday in regards to that. Ambayo itabeba wa Kenya wote na itafanya kazi sio ya ubinafsi sio ya chama fulani sio ya kikundi fulani sio ya sehemu fulani tunataka kuomba the rest of us who serve under you and the ones you shall pick also to show humility to the people of Kenya All right. So then, um, of course, the president had, had reached out to the opposition to have dialogue and also members of uh, different um, uh, sectors. Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musyoka said this yesterday. <laughs> So, Mushman Lachi, let me begin with you. What has changed? Because Ray Lodinga appeared um, on Tuesday when, after the signing of the IBC bill, now into law. He said that he would be showing up for dialogue that should have actually started today. Later that week, the president fired his cabinet secretaries and said he's going to engage in some broad-based consultations uh, to reconstitute the government. Now, Roy Lodinga and Kalonzo Musioka are saying that there will be no dialogue. If you want to talk, talk with the people. Where are we? You see, in the first place, the dialogue was meant to be of the young people who had so many several questions. And everyone who comes out you have been in government. And the questions young people are asking are, did not just start yesterday. Mm -hmm. We started with them many years. We have to forge and ask ourselves, where did we start going wrong as a country? We started at a place where it's a very painful place. And I think it's good to remind now our steps mm -hmm. as we have been there, because it's time I may be we say, let us see a very, very different group taking over to see how government will move. Sam, you remember we started this country, the time we started accepting money from countries that were in war, where people were crying, yet we became a haven of where you keep those who have mismanaged their country, they bring their dirty money in Kenya, and you allow it as governments, and you make them now keep themselves here. And at that time, there are people are lashing in cries, in poverty, in camps, but they are here comfortable moving. Up to today, we still have that curse on us. We have refused completely to return monies to South Sudan, to Somalia, for these countries to start working. Then we moved on. We made our passport a passport where today uh, you find 
a foreigner will use it at a convenient time. This time I'm a Kenyan, this time I become the country that I came from. And we never question and we never do, we didn't care as leaders, we move on. Then now we are given this, this lust of money that has finished Kenya, this greed. This greed that has made our country get to the knees at where we are until our, 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 the youth have now come to tell us, look, you are the worst of the worst. All of us, by the way, mm -hmm. I carry the same burden because it is within, I have worked in government and I have seen, we just mismanage. We want to love to see me having everything and this other Kenyan here, is about is sleeping hungry, is sleeping on the street. I have no courtesy to care as long as I am doing well. It doesn't matter this other side. And so I want to tell all our leaders this morning, mm -hmm. as a woman of Kenya, we are not good. All of us, whether you want to do dialogue or no dialogue, if we have been in government for 30 years, we are part of the problem that has brought Kenya to where it is. To where it is. Ask yourself, I will ask myself, in the space that I was given right. in those years, what did I do mm -hmm. that was either good or bad? Am I able to change? Am I able to do better? Am I able to go and say, in my heart, because I know Nobody can agree to bring skeletons here. They will, all of us will hide our skeletons. But are we able to reflect in God's eyes and say, did I just do wrong somewhere? Somewhere. But I know the pain comes when you see that mama of Madari. I keep on looking at the image of Shosho in Madari. Shosho who fought for Mau Mau, who still has his thrusters are coming down here. Mm -hmm. who today sleeps in the streets of Nairobi. I, and I listened to that cry, and I told myself, we are done. This one, God just unveils us as leaders who have let down his people, the country, a country that is so blessed, is the country within East Africa now wondering what mm -hmm. to do next. Right. Yes. And Mushimu Mboe, so initially there were to be talks. I saw your party, the National Executive Committee Visit Council, after the meeting announcing that uh, you will not be party to this. What motivated that at a time that it appears the president thinks he needs every hands on deck? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Some first uh, let us uh, go back to looking at the situation we're in. Right now, the reason we require to have a national dialogue is because the young generation, the, the Gen Z, have gone to the streets to defend for their rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, some I will tell you, um, last year, uh, Azimio was in the streets on the same issues of cost of living, uh, poor governance, and uh, 75 uh, Kenyans were killed. Mm -hmm. uh, remember. Uh, well, I would say that maybe uh, ours were a little bit more violent because our, our, our young boys and girls would throw stones to defend themselves. But the police reacted and shot them and killed quite a number of them. But after that process, in order to heal the country, we came up with, uh, with, with a process to, 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 to bring the country together. The first one was, um, you know, the, the, the bringing the parties together, the Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa. And I remember the first team that was put together that had uh, Senators Sifuna, uh, Wabua and too. others mm -hmm. uh, to sit together with the team from Kenya Kwanzaa, it failed. And then now my party leader became a co-chair of another process of attempting to bring Kenyans together to have national dialogue. In fact, theirs was called the National Dialogue Committee. Right. And, and they discussed all these issues at length. And some of the very important things we wanted dealt with, like this of cost of living, uh, the, the team of Kenya Kwanzaa dismissed them and said that's not, in, that's not consequential, that is their business. Now, unfortunately, as a result of that, um, the, 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 the nine bills that were supposed to be passed by parliament, when they were presented to the house, they have, the, the, the house has been uh, asleep. The f only one bill was passed. And that is an IBC bill. Some as we are talking, there's constituents in this country, the citizens of this country, voters, that have been without a member of parliament for more than a year. That is Banisa. 
there's many, many uh, county assemblies that do not have representation. And their people are paying taxes. And this has happened because we are dragging our feet. So my party leader and us as a party, our question is this. If we could not implement, if we cannot implement, there is no political goodwill to implement the NADCO report that was already passed by the two sides. When it came to parliament, it has been sat on by the leadership of the House then I, I, I think uh, really at the end of the day, what it means is that uh, this is another exercise in futility. What we are doing is that we are trying to ensure that uh, you know, we appease the, 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 the young generation so that we tell them these talks. But after the talks, what happens? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the reason that uh, the new uh, talks have been called for is because of the Gen Z revolution. And because of the Gen Z revolution, you have seen quickly the president has signed into law the IEBC uh, whatever bill. Now it's an act of parliament. So I think there is, uh, there is no political goodwill. And that is why we are worried. Now, you know, Kenyan voters are educated. Some, you actually want to uh, attribute the sending of the ABC amendment bill to Gen Z protests? Uh, it's, 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 it's indeed obvious. I thought that is such an I obvious thing. it had just passed. At this it had passed, but let me tell you, yeah. you saw the ceremony that was, how many bills has the President Ruto signed into, into law? And how many did he call uh, everybody? So it is to, the sending ceremony. Appease. The ceremony was okay. done because to, to, to appease the, the, the Gen Z. That was, what, that was the real reason, to tell them that we are now listening to you. We, are, we have started working together. Now we, have even, we are even in having a good uh, you know, relationship with the, with, the, with the opposition. That's basically, I think for me, that was an exercise in PR. But let me say this, Kenyans are educated. Kenyan voters are educated. And we have to be careful that we start listening to each other. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan voters are saying that what they require is action. Action, not these talks, because these talks don't amount to much if there is no action, if there is no political goodwill. You saw that uh, in Parliament the other day, just after the young men revolted and occupied Parliament, the very next morning, Parliament convened, and within a span of like 10, 15, 20 minutes, they actually passed a law to bring military to the streets of Kenya. We were not listening to each other. We attempted to speak in that house and were denied the opportunity. Only about four or five people spoke. Mm -hmm. How can Parliament of the Republic of Kenya make such far-reaching uh, decisions without even listening to the voices of those that are elected to be the representatives of the people? Now, uh, you've seen, we've just discussed the RML, the road maintenance levy, that has been increased without reference to the people's representatives. You know, under the table, the, an increase in, 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 uh, in a levy is implemented by the same government. And you, you, we are talking about political goodwill. We are talking about getting to sit together. When the president decided to dismiss his cabinet, the only office that he retained, because the office of the deputy president is constitutionally, he cannot touch it. The only office he retained was the office of the prime CS, the only unconstitutional office in the cabinet. So what, what are we telling each other here? I think there is no political goodwill. President also the other day, immediately after the demonstration, said, look, we are going to stop Harambe's because that's one of the reasons why a member of parliament earning less than a million is able to go and give two, three, four, five million in a Harambe. We need to stop that pressure so no more Harambe's. Over the weekend, he went to a church. The president gave money to complete the construction of that church. I mean, the double speak, Sam, that's, why we have, that's a problem we are facing. And that's why we are saying that at the end of it all, these talks will not amount to anything. Let the president form his government, uh, let him bring people that are credible so that we can be able to vet them, and then we see whether we can move the country to the next level. You, you know, you're saying that um, he gave the money in that church. He didn't. I think he instructed. Let me just get the quotation. Um, I, I can tell you what he said. I direct my deputy regarding Gashagua and the church leadership to see how much is needed to complete the church project and so that I check. can write a check. Yes. So he didn't give the money. He will. But that's... that's that. Sam, what are you saying? Harambez, you don't necessarily have to give them money. You just give the check. That's it. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a process. Will. The idea is a mistake. Uh -huh. That political leaders are the ones that are taking money to go and build churches. That is a pressure that makes people corrupt. Okay. The president's salary cannot afford for him to be giving money in every church and building churches. So you want him to deal with his own cabinet? He needs, to, he needs to form his own cabinet, as okay. Kenya Kwanza cabinet, because he's in office, mm -hmm. and uh, finish the next uh, two, three years and give space to another government that can take Kenya to the next level.
Uh, Deputy Speaker, would you know the essence of, because he termed it, he gave it a word, I think it's broad-based, he said that I will immediately engage in extensive consultations across different sectors and in political formations with the aim of setting up a broad-based government that will assist me in accelerating and expediting the necessary, urgent and irreversible implementation of radical programs and many other issues that he uh, entails or details there in paragraph 15 of his statement. Why would he need a broad-based uh, government at this point? Okay, first of all, let me just uh, just quickly go back to what uh, Honorable Mbuya said. If you remember the issue of National Dialogue a Committee that was chaired or co-chaired by the Honorable, his party leader, Honorable Kalonzo, with that, after that dialogue, that is when the IEBC uh, bill uh, came out. It was it was a creature of that to those talks, and also uh, the, I think the two thirds gender rule is one of the the laws that is coming on to that. So so the I it, to say that IEBC was was done as a reaction to the movement it, it is not. This has been ongoing. There's been need to have an IEBC from the beginning, and the reason why there was. Uh, several uh, political leaders invited to that signing ceremony is because it came uh, that l law was bore as a result of the national dialogue committee mm -hmm. that was uh, had all parties present and uh, and and this and, and remember that um, and now we, we are, there is a different type of dialogue being spoken about and i think i'm referring to the one that uh, the, i think uh, Honorable Raila and Honorable Calonzo went to the tragedy site and used it as a platform for their own political mileage. That is saddening and it's unbecoming of leaders. You cannot use the pain of others to advance your own political. Uh, he could have made that statement elsewhere, but not to go there. I'd have expected that if he got there, he'd be speaking to members of the public to find out what happened, what is the t challenge about this particular dump site. I would have expected him to be going to see the, the director of criminal investigations, the acting IG, and taking them on and asking them that how is it that Kenyans have died and been, been dumped in this site. Not to go and use that platform to dance on other people's graves. That is wrong and it is immoral. And and when we and when and uh, I, in that same place, uh, the death, uh, the site where there was a tragedy, he's saying no dialogue, no dialogue, and getting the chance to say that. But the dialogue we're talking about, nobody wanted to have dialogue with Raila Odinga or Kalonzo. The dialogue that is being discussed about now is to have a dialogue with the youth of Kenya, who have been dubbed the Gen Zs. They are the ones who have said who that needed to be engaged. Was Raila really to be there? Sorry? Was Raila Odinga to be there? I don't know, but my assumption is, my because when he's, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that has to do with him. Mm. He, he's no longer, he's not part of that dialogue. This is about being able to engage the, the young generation. And I've listened to, the, to a lot of them when they've been speaking. I know that there was one who was very eloquent here, Kamuel Makoure, and there was Shakira. They were amazing, and they were very clear. And I think those are some of the things we should pick up. What they said is that we don't actually want to get into a discussion or a dialogue. They said what we want is action. They said we want jobs. We want to see good governance. In fact, they corrected the media. And I was very impressed about that. Uh, Marco Ure said that these are not anti-government protests. He said they are pro-governance protests. And that's exactly what they are. They want the government to be held to account. They want to be able to see that there's no corruption by, uh, 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 in, the, in the public service. They said they want to see that the right people are put who are competent and capable of delivering uh, what they are constitutionally supposed to deliver to Kenyans. They want to see public servants and members of parliament who are serving the people and not serving themselves. They were very clear about that. So this has nothing to do with Raila Odinga or Kalonzo. Let us keep it that this is a conversation that the youth of Kenya have, this, have, have brought so, so up. When is that? And, when and, this is is, and, this, and this for me I see yeah. as a, um, it is, I, I, I appreciate it because it is good that young people are beginning to speak for their country. Okay. That they are so, interested so, in what is speaker, going on in their country. When is that conversation in the youth happening? 
that is not, that's above my pay grade. I'm not the one who's going to call the talks. But that discussions to have it has happened. And the way I see it is that this is an opportunity that Kenyans must seize. Any leader in Kenya who wants a better Kenya mm -hmm. must seize this opportunity and use it. Because I've seen in the past, every time Kenya has had a crisis, something good has come out of it. Mm -hmm. If you remember the riots and protests before multi-party democracy, when people were the young people at that time, Raila Odinga was young, I think they referred to them as the young tax then, they also were clamoring for multi-party democracy. And we achieved multi-party democracy. Right. We have managed to be able to put term limits to, uh, uh, to the presidential term. We had had a president who had served for 24 years. Section 2A was repealed. So even though those, those protests were, might, have, might have cost lives and so on, it was a moment that we took in and changed Kenya. Okay. Again, you look at 2007. In 2007, blood was shed. But out of the 2007 violence, we made a, 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 a fraud proof electoral system. We were able, as a result of that, also to get a new constitution right. where all these rights, the rights to be able to demonstrate peacefully, the right to Article 43, the right to housing, the right to education, the right to um, affordable housing, the right to health, those were all bore from moments like this. Okay. And I think I, I this want, time... I wanted us to listen to some, because you said that um, the dialogue has nothing to do with Raila Odinga. Let's listen to a clip of what they said on Tuesday last week. We look forward to beginning the forum on Monday next week. The various uh, stakeholders will be required to submit their representatives by Friday this week. A dialogue is the way forward out of the crisis that we're having today in our country. We agree that uh, we give uh, people an opportunity to be heard. Working together for us to address the current economic situation through a broad-based political arrangement and to rally the country forward. So, Mushuma Mbui, Deputy Speaker says that uh, Raila was not to be uh, party to this, but he appears there with the President saying what he did. When did this change? You know, you know, Especially within Azimio now. Uh, you, know, you know, Sam, I, I was very clear about this situation, that uh, the only reason Kenya Kwanza is calling for this uh, dialogue is because of uh, the revolution or the revolt by the, the young Kenyans. And I'm shocked, uh, if you allow me to just, uh, the, uh, the comment uh, made by the Deputy Speaker, who's a, a, a serious supporter of the regime that has killed uh, 41 young people in the last, like, three weeks, and 75 uh, Kenyans last year because of, uh, you know, peaceful picketing uh, under the, the Article 37 of the Constitution. And, uh, you know, so many Kenyans have also been abducted and a regime that also sent the military to the streets without debate. So I'm surprised that uh, uh, you know a, a member of such a regime can can say that my leader, when they say the, they don't want to talk, they want action, which is what the young people are saying. They say that is dancing on the graves of the dead people. Who 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 is it who has killed them? You know, are you telling us that we cannot mourn, we cannot speak in, in, in funerals when when our people have been killed and you know and slaughtered like chicken? So for me, I think the 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 the, the, the reason for the dialogue was because of the pressure that has been brought about by the young people when they're asking for better governance. And, and, and the president wanted all of us to sit at the table. That is a fact. That is what he really intended. But for us, we feel that what it needs to be done is not to sit at the table and continue talking. We need action taken. He's already taken action and kicked out his, uh, his, C his CSS. We are curious to see the kind of people you bring in when he starts replacing the cabinet. We are curious to see whether he's learned a lesson from the mistakes that have been made in the past. So the thing is, it is not as a meal that is going to sanitize the Kenya Kwanzaa government. It is Ruto's government up to 2027. Let him figure out and listen to people. If we don't listen to each other, Sam, we will not get solutions. I, I wish that the deputy speaker could listen to me keenly because when she says that uh, our leaders were dancing on the graves of people that they didn't kill and the ones that uh, are involved in the killings are standing behind DCI there and smiling at the camera, I think uh, we, we, we are taking the country in the wrong direction. There is need for action to be taken, not for discussions.
That's my opinion. Action. That's the opinion of uh, discussion. Azimio. And I think then, based on what the deputy speaker was quoting as coming from Kasmo Makuri, um, or Makuri, I don't know what the Mac pronunciation. Makuri, I think. Correct. Um, so based on that, then it appears like you're almost in agreement. I'm just wondering, uh, DS, what would a broad-based government look like? And why do you need to have a conversation, yet the president has all the instruments he needs? You, you, okay, now you're asking me about something that is, you know, like I said, sometimes you ask things that are, you're basically speculating. But what you, I, I'm talking about things I see. When you looked at uh, the meeting at KICC, it was immediately after they are sent into, uh, of, into law of the IEBC bill, which I said was a culmination of discussions among the political leadership. And that was before the dismissal of cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yes, you but know that. But there's a statement of the president saying a broad based. I mean, you come from Kenya. Yes, but I'm saying the, 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 discu the discussions, that, that, that explanation yeah. was before was it was before the dismissal of cabinet. So you can't use that. He couldn't have been speculating at that time. No, I'm that saying issue. in the statement of the president dismissing the cabinet, yes. he says that he is going to ex engage in extensive What I know that has been, as has been said after was that he is going to uh, make sure that he has a cabinet that is diverse, that is the face of Kenya. Those are the quotes after the dismissal, if you look at it. Across different political formations? Yes. What does that mean? I think you have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, how can I speak for the president? <laughs> Yes. Um, I think that you'd have to. There are some questions you should direct. What, what, I know some people find yeah. it very easy to speculate and speak on behalf of other people. I'm not one of those. <laughs> I speak for myself. And but, even when I've explained the happenings, yeah. I'm saying it as I have seen it, mm. the way as, as I view it. And after listening all the time, I mean, if you look at, if you listen to the discussions on space, the discussions on the social media by the youth of Kenya, uh, listening to the ones who have come to the TV stations, what they are actually saying, the, the more urgent item for them is to be able to see action. They want to okay. see changes being made. And a lot of, uh, most of the, some of, many of the things that they have demanded have been seen there. The issue of corruption is big. The, the president has acknowledged that he'll address. Okay. The issue of a more service oriented public service, I think those are the issues. But of course, it's, the conversation doesn't end there because I don't think they're they are done with saying all the things because they're continuing conversation. Maybe some changes will be made and they'll, not, and they'll continue to have an opportunity because yeah. even when the president will nominate mm. members of his cabinet and send the names to parliament for vetting, what will happen is there is an opportunity for any Kenyan to be able to write a memorandum either in support of a nominee or against the nominee. So the conversation will not end. So right. we'll have an opportunity to have uh, more participation All by right. the citizenry every step of the way. And the good thing is now we have the goodwill from the head of state. You know what is interesting? So I enjoy that and I'm, I'm happy with that engaging yeah. because our main priority as leaders now is to preserve our country. Sure. We cannot let Kenya fall. It is a responsibility, all our patriotic duty. From whatever political divide you come, mm -hmm. you come from, it will not help us if all of us will be lining up in refugee camps and soup kitchens and have no country. So our main agenda should be, in the light of what has happened, we have listened to the young people of Kenya. We have heard them. They have made very valid points. Those points are being taken into account and acted on. So it should be our responsibility for each and every one of us okay. to begin to act on that. Parliament will have a role. The executive will have a role. Mem people, civil servants will have a role. I, I hear Political you. leaders will have a, a, I, I hear you, Deputy a, Speaker. A role. I, I, and I was just going to say that it's interesting because it's very clear, um, at least from what you're saying, on what the agenda should be. And it is also contained in paragraph 15, the same paragraph that I'm reading of what the president intends to do with them. Uh, the broad-based government, uh, which is including expanding job opportunities, eliminate wastage and unnecessary uh, duplication of a multiplicity of government agencies, and slay the dragon of corruption, uh, consequently making the government lean, inexpensive, effective, and efficient. So, Moshmo Elachi, 
What is your understanding of this, what the president intends to do from all these extensive consultations? And what do you think he needs to do? Because he appears like he's keen on getting members of the cabinet from different political formations. The, at least, Wiper Party is very clear that he doesn't want to be party to that. Ray Lodinga has said that he doesn't want dialogue, he wants action. So what does he do? Well, uh, first, uh, let me say this, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll say it in a very um, humble way, uh, that uh, I think what uh, His Excellency Baba felt is that, and, and I can see the papers, as Mio calls another meeting, amid whatever. But I think he felt it is important to consult all leaders within Azimio. And that's why he felt then there's no dialogue. If all of them are saying there's no dialogue, he's part of that leadership. Mm -hmm. He cannot no go against. And uh, I've always said he has a very unique way of doing his things that not most of us were gifted with that gift of listening. Now, after saying that, uh, we, we need as Azmir to ask ourselves, if today we are given the country, where do you take the country? Yeah, if today now God says, okay, here is the country, where do you take the country? So in, in the actions, we must come up with a blueprint mm. that will say these are the actions we would wish to see government take. Now, from my opinion, action number one, yes, we have sent home the CSS, fine. But it means after we bring in the new team, you must now relook at your PSS for you to have something that now moves together. And then going forward, down, you, you scale down and look at every, every institution mm -hmm. that we've had issues with. If you want to deal with corruption, then you must be, I, I, I don't know, you'll have to open up and deal with it. Number one is to ask any country that is keeping right now properties of Kenyans who have gone to buy things in a Dubai, where, where. That is money should, that should come back and go and pay debt. Number three, you want to pay debt for Kenya? Let us not always wait until we are saying it is now, the, 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 the principal is now ready. Why can't we pay every month our debt the way we pay in the bank? Then when it comes to that time, you can even negotiate with the owners of the monies who I don't know and tell them, look, we've been paying every month. We've never defaulted, so we need time. Or can we renegotiate in a very painful way the loans we have not used? We return, but we will return with painful because we will pay a principal on top of it, which is okay, but you'll have closed that gap. You mean interest? A a interest, yes, mm -hmm. but you'll have closed that gap. Why can't we think through? And that is what, when you listen to the Gen Cs, why they are saying we are, the, the, the worst was the, the lavish. You say we don't have money, but here we are very lavish. We are doing this. And I think that is what angered them more. Yeah. And the way we, t and can we have humility? Mm. Because if we had humility from the word go, Kenyans would have understood us. But we went completely out of the box and we decided to be a, a country where we have the spirit of Pharaoh where we just are arrogant and we do things and we pump it to people. And people are wondering, really? And that is what and, and, has brought and, and, us and, and, to where. No, and so you, when the saying? government is, when you're looking to your people, the one you want to now say, yeah. I am nominating so and so. Remember, it is not just parliament that is going to vet this person. Every Kenyan will be on the screen. Every Kenyan is going to look at your skeleton. So when you are bringing a someone, don't bring a someone who, first of all, is sitting on a property that was for government many years, and you think they won't tell us. They will say it. Before you even arrive, they'll have said, first of all, you, you took government land, you decided it's your own land. Mm. Number two, you took this, you decided it's yours. Return this before you come to this job. So that is how... The youths have transformed so completely. What do, you think, Elachi, what do you think should be the role of the minority party? Um, That's what I said. Now that the minority party, we have said we are not going into dialogue. We must put up a blueprint to show Kenyans the actions we want to see are one, two, three. But we can't just say it uh, the way we are saying. No, 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 no. We have to present our hours 
that if it was us, we would have one, two, three, six pillars, six pillars. This is how we'd want to see these pillars run. This is how we want to see. If you're talking of a lean government, then yes, this lean government. And how will you ensure that? Because well, uh, uh, there is one that you will not be party to the talks, the, or the dialogue. With I have the said we are not in the dialogue. But isn't it fair? Because we take half of Kenyans, by the way. Isn't it fair to tell, sit down with those Kenyans and say, why we are not in here, the actions we want to see are these. Isn't it fair to give out the actions we want to see? Because there's no need of coming again to start now, uh, again. Uh, uh, You're not ready to contribute a few CSS or PSS? Eh? SSMEO? <laughs> Sam. Yes. You know, now that one I, I, I think is beyond, I mean, why, why would you want to contribute first of all? Kenyans, because the president has said... Yes, but you know there are Kenyans across these 47 counties. In Wh whether you pick some from Mukambani, from Luo, from where... Here this uh, I mean... The president will engage in extensive consultations across different sectors and political formations with yes. the aim of setting up a broad-based government. Doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. What do you think that means? Well, I don't know what it means but to you. Know, you. you know, to me, what to... it means, uh, Sam, yeah. is that broad-based, you are looking at Kenya at the flag. The flag flies in 47 counties. And as a unitary state, we are one country. So if you bring in all tribes, then be it. But that does not mean now, as me, you have contributed. How now? I thought you are bringing Kenyans per merit, per merit, that they will come and be vetted per merit okay. this time round, not per political formations. Mm. That we must have this one. No, no, no. You bring every Kenyan, let he or she be vetted, and I'm hoping it's a 50-50 this time, because as, 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 as Deputy said, yep. there's an opportunity now to fuse in. And you can also do one third. Men, one third, women, give them this, and we see also how Kenya will move. Why not? When you look at it, Deputy Speaker, um, because uh, the government of William Ruto has suffered a lot of setbacks, whether it's with the people or even in the courts. Just last week, uh, the health laws, three of them, a Social Health Insurance Act, Digital Health Act, Primary Health Care Act, they were termed to be unconstitutional for various gaps, including public participation. You remember the contention with the affordable housing levy that was in the Finance Act of 2023? There's the Shakahola massacre that just last week was rendered unconstitutional, the probe itself, uh, by the High Court, and many other issues. Yet Kenyans have felt it has not lived to its standards. What do you think could have gone wrong? Is it at the point of formation of government or is it within uh, service? These are actually signs of a maturing democracy and a, ma a democracy that is first going to become a mature democracy. So what is happening in Kenya uh, with, with, the, with the court actions and the court scrutinizing the laws that we have passed, that is very positive progress. If you look at America, with every pronouncement by the Supreme Court against the sitting government, the country improved and changed. And that's why today they have the solid democracy that they have. So we should not look at this as setbacks. Actually, it is improvement of our systems, our democracy. And it actually begins to show the world why we have three arms of government. You have the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, and each is supposed to check the other. And so I actually appreciate that today Kenyans are, are, are exercising their constitutional right to undertake public interest litigation and take it to court, and that the courts are actually scrutinizing it and giving direction uh, uh, to, to, to parliament on how they should conduct their business. Uh, what had happened in the past, would, why you didn't see this happening is, our democracy was not as robust. People now are becoming much more aware. You, in the past, I think the only, during the time when I was at law school, the only public interest litigation mm -hmm. that we could, uh, when I was teaching, it was actually when I was teaching, the only public in lit uh, interest litigation that we referred to was the uh, Wangare Mathai versus KTMT Trust. 
It was the first time that there was actually public interest litigation on behalf of the public. And at that time, the law did not suit her. The law didn't allow mm -hmm. Wagare Mathai to go on behalf of the, the people. She was told you're not the attorney general. But today, anyone can go to court on behalf of the people of Kenya. We don't have to rely on the attorney general. So it is amazing progress. It is something that we should not call a setback, right. but amazing progress. You go to other countries no, around no, the I'm, African I'm region. because the president had an the, agenda. No, but I'm just saying the other, the, the, if you look at the countries across the region, you cannot take the government to, uh, to, to court. You do, you lose your head. So I think it is progress. Don't call it a setback. I'm sure you know what I mean, uh, Deputy Speaker. I'm talking about the setback on the side of the executive. Mm. And part of the blame from people that have been speaking about uh, issues of concern is that Parliament has become, and even them, they have said that it, it, it is actually one of the biggest problems. It has been uh, almost an extension of the executive. What responsibility do you think Parliament should take for the last two years? I think what also the Parliament has said, uh, and there's been discussions. The first time, the Constitution just said public participation should be undertaken. And that was done. And then after a while, some Kenyans challenged it and said, no, this looks like cosmetic public participation. We must have real public participation, both qualitative and quantitative. And the debate began. And I think we, that's when the public participation bill came in. So it's been uh, growing. So that's what I'm saying. It's one thing to say public participation in the Constitution. But now Kenya has begun to question the way it's being conducted. And it has been said that public participation, who is it that you must, you must hear from? Mm. And, that is, and, and that jurisprudence has not yet been set. It is continuing to evolve. You know, uh, laws are made by parliament. But the interpretation of the laws are made by the judiciary. And that interpretation of the law over time becomes law. That's what we call judge-made law. That's why Kenya is a common law system, that we rely on the pronouncements of the judiciary to clarify and solidify the law. So when I'm reading um, a, 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 an act of parliament, yep. I must also read the interpretation of that act of parliament by the courts to, com to correctly understand what the position of the law is. Okay. So, the, so uh, people, they, as, a, as a lawyer, as an academic lawyer, and as someone who has taught at the university, I, I'm enjoying this. You know, this is, I wish I was you, teaching at the university you, again, because you know, there's so much to speaker, teach. I, I hear what you're saying. In what, in what we are doing, But yes. you're avoiding my question mm -hmm. by a mile. Yes. Let's listen to something else. The president and the deputy, um, what they said yesterday, I think it was sort of the second meeting since the dissolution of, or dismissal of uh, cabinet secretaries. My brother, when I'm here, let me address you as my brother. Let it not happen that poison is brought back to this country to kill our children when you are the president of the Republic of Kenya. Mimi nataka ni kubaliana na deputy president. Ya kwamba pombe haramu, madawa ya kulevia, haiwezi kuendelea katika taifa letu la Kenya. So um, that happened just last week, the previous week, the deputy, speak, uh, sorry, deputy mm. president had uh, mm. spoken against the interior ministry, against officials within them, and also a member of parliament saying that they were hampering the war against um, illicit brew. And he went back to the region, now with the president. And of course, horrible boy, we have seen quite a bit of hiccups between the, in the relationship between the two top leaders. What is it that now has to change uh, in the next three years, even as you look at institutional reforms, including where you sit, which is parliament? Yeah, some, some I think uh, this, uh, this relationship between the, His Excellency, the President, and his deputy is, 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 a, is, is, is a fake uh, friendship. Because just a short while ago, the deputy president was complaining that he couldn't even get to a function where the president uh, attended on time because of uh, challenges. He called them uh, transport challenges. And uh, the, I think the CS for, for defense had issued some circular and said that no politician would travel using military or police uh, choppers. 
And immediately after the cabinet is disbanded, the deputy president now again suddenly can access military and police choppers. That's what he was using to travel. Mm. I think there's a lot of fake relationships within the leadership of the country. I think people need to start getting real. If uh, there's uh, if, if there's issues uh, that uh, if there's any differences, they must be brought out in the open. We must find a way between by which the president and his deputy, our governors and their deputies, can be able to uh, address their challenges because this seems to be a problem of power play. It's, it's, it's been happening. When, uh, when, when William Ruto was deputy president, the same problem was there. He, he had a fight with his president, with his leader, with his boss for five years. And, and, and in fact, uh, the, 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 when Tanga Tanga tag came, it was because the president was very unhappy with his moving around instead of you know, staying in office and supporting him. So I think this, uh, this relationship between our leaders needs to be addressed and we must find a way of uh, not washing our dirty linen in public because it is those fights between leaders that also go all the way to our youth. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the young, our youth, are, are, you know, they, do, they don't have any fear telling it as it is. Sometimes, you know, they say things that, you know, when we are that age, wouldn't say to people that are older than us. So I think that relationship needs to be addressed. But some I want to also say that uh, Parliament has failed Kenya. And I keep saying this, and it is good our Deputy Speaker is here, Parliament has failed Kenya. The minute Parliament starts doing what is constitutionally allowed under the law, then suddenly we will see differences in this country. We have always operated like an appendage of the executive. And, and, and I've said this before, you find members of parliament, even from the side of the minority, trooping to state house and they say they're looking for development. Mm. Yet it is a, the power of the past is in the hands of parliament. How do you go to the president to tell him to make the budget, yet the budget is made in parliament? So I think the minute parliament understands its powers and we are there to represent the interests of our people and we speak to each other, we can actually save this country. Kenya would not have reached where it was. You saw the Gen Z decided that the first place they went to occupy was parliament. Because the, in, in essence, what they are saying is that if parliament did its work, they wouldn't need to be in the streets. If parliaments, if we spoke to, our, to each other, those in the Kenya Kwanzaa and those in, in Azimio, if we spoke to each other and listened to each other, we'd be able to provide solutions for the country. Unfortunately, we don't so, do so that. Do you think in the current environment, do you think it's a possibility that um, you can have that conversation between I, the two sides? I think, I think some, the young people have shown us the way. Because when they came to that house, they were very bitter. And members of Kenya Kwanzaa, you should have seen them running. Some, you know, the reality is that uh, the youth have told us that you people have been put in that house, talk to each other and make laws that are good for us. You saw when uh, we were vetting the, 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 the cabinet that has been dismissed. There were people with issues, legal challenges, criminal cases. There was somebody with a, with a, with a, with a, with a case on murder. There was another with a case on uh, rape. And these people, and one of them even told us, leave alone these cases you're talking about. We have about 30 civil cases out there on, 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 on you know, on, on, you know, I mean, you can't be having 30 civil cases you're fighting about property ownership and all that and say you are totally clean. So, so then, then what, what happened? The, 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 it was forced down the throat of parliament. We passed the, those names. And when they went to, 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 to work, the first thing that was done is that the, the state organs, security organs, were used to sanitize these people. Cases were dropped by DCI. I mean, that is a problem that we are facing. Parliament could have saved Kenya at that time if we agreed that some of these people DCI don't qualify. Sorry? DCI or DPP? DPP, sorry, DPP. Okay. DPP. So, so uh, we, we, when you look at it, uh, cabinet again did not have the face of Kenya. There was uh, two, some ethnic communities that had a lot, a lot more people within that cabinet. Mm. It was also not gender balanced. And yet parliament, all those are the things that we talked about, but parliament ignored and, and decided because the exec executive has spoken, it has to pass that way. You, you remember the other day we had that issue of KRA and that's the problem we are facing as a country. When uh, some 1,000 something, 1,400 and something mm. uh, young boys and girls or men and women were recruited to KRA and over 53% were from two ethnic communities. That's the same thing we are seeing also happening in cabinet. Those are the things that parliament could have helped because we would have said that uh, it doesn't matter 
uh, that the government has primarily gotten votes from certain regions, yeah. but even all these other parts of Kenya really need to. So, so it is possible for Parliament to reject it is possible. a cabinet based on constitutional It is possible standards. for us to talk to each other. It is possible for us to agree right. that we can bring healing to this country. The minute we start listening to each other, and the minute that our voices are heard, because we represent the people, so that we don't go to uh, to go open uh, go back to Parliament next week, and then a motion is brought to bring military to the streets of Kenya, and within 10, 15 15 minutes after three, four people have spoken, the All speaker right. says put the question. All right. Let's take a look at the feedback. Then I can get the closing voices from uh, Deputy Speaker and Honorable Elachi. Um, Otieno, you're saying that uh, as the Deputy Speaker, if the Gen Z protests uh, is pro-government, why are we witnessing extrajudicial killings and abductions? You may want to note that down. Jim Rose is saying the young generation are not in for the dialogue. We have seen many dialogue without any action taken. Kenya Kwanza government needs to stop corruption, get technocrats as CSS, create jobs for the youth and accountability for taxes. Um, Gadua Gashora, the dire issue of mistrust among Kenyans will not be resolved by empty rhetoric and personnel reform. Uh, Kenyans need proper change of this inept system that will start by having a new people with a people-centric mindset in parliament. Hmm. Ask Ashole, most, must Kenyans die or revolt to trigger real change and better governance? It's time to demand accountability and assert our right to leadership that prioritizes the people's needs, not just react in times of emergency. Um, Barangetuni, you're saying, it is sad to see the leaders running away from blame game. All leaders should understand that they are the face of our problems today. Ask Mbui if he ever tabled a youth-friendly bill in parliament and um dalo you're saying our problem is disobedience to the constitution it says kenya is a multi-party democracy instead they scheme to swallow the opposition buying them off it's also called corruption disobedience to the constitution so i have less than two minutes i don't know how we share it out uh, between the three of you um much more let you begin with you on what you think needs to change especially at the institution of uh, parliament I think in Parliament, all of us just must change. And uh, we must now uh, agree that there are times you have to have a bipartisan way of managing your, uh, the interests of the country. And there are times, yes, you go into your political. We must stop this thing of thinking it has to be very political, every time combative. No. And more importantly, we must just respect that when a law comes into Parliament, it's an arm of government. The way the executive is an arm of government and judiciary is an arm of government. And so we don't need to really force everything to be pro-government. No. Let it be parliament, pro-parliament, that we have looked at the interest of the 290 and those 47 who are there. The interest of Kenya is covered. And we are advising now the executive that this is best this way. The day we do that, we bring back our dignity. The day we do back, we cleanse parliament because we get back into a parliament where young people, their brains were left in parliament. I want to tell the speaker, we must cleanse parliament. There is no way you can make it a business as usual when you realize there was bloodshed there. And I hope that what bloodshed... What does cleansing look like? Cleansing is we become now truthful to the, uh, the, the duty we swore to do. Let us now give Kenya a right parliament. Let them see us debate issues that are rightfully for Kenya, not for pleasing anyone, not for pleasing the executive or the judiciary, but for Kenya. Okay. Yet, Deputy Speaker, there are a few issues that have been highlighted by the viewers there, but also parliament, or rather our system is such that we are majority of people are elected in political parties. The president leads a political party, has an agenda for the nation, but an agenda for the party. And usually the people in the house will have to speak the language of the party. So how do you ensure that while observing the interest of the party, you're also observing the interest of the people? Because that has been one of the biggest conflicts that you've seen uh, between the people in parliament. Yes, I think uh, what has happened the last week is that we've had 
we've gro our civic participation by the youth has grown by leaps and bounds. It has also come very clear to us as leaders that we must listen to the people and begin to serve them as their servants because the times have changed. There was a time communication was so poor that people will not, would not know what their leaders are doing. But today, with the, with the, with the communications technology, that has changed. So as leaders, we must also begin to know that we are held under much more accountability and scrutiny mm -hmm. than ever before. So it is a chance for us to, to respond to the way the people have reacted. On the issue of, um, on, on the, issue of the balances within parliament, every government, You've seen the American government, the president trying to get the, a majority in Congress. He's struggling to balance the, the majority in Senate and so on. Because to move any government programs, you need to have a clear majority. That's why people ensure that they get a majority. We saw the crisis in the, US, the uh, UK the other day, where Sunak had to call for snap elections in the hope that he could turn out a majority. Of course, mm. he ended up losing 125 seats and didn't get it. But that is the reality of democracy. But I think the lesson for Kenya here is that it has been, and what Kenyans want and what the youth have, have said they want is very clear. They want jobs, they want unemployment, to, the problem of unemployment to be dealt with. They have uh, said that they want accountability, they want to see that uh, the transparency and more people-centric uh, programs being undertaken. But, and, and, and I think this time, the vetting of the cabinet secretaries okay. will be extremely at a high level. Because I, I sat in the vetting uh, committee last time, and, uh, but unfortunately, the, we, ha we didn't have any memorandums from members of the public, even though there was a call for memorandums to talk, to, to uh, testify as to the suitability or non-suitability of the, of, uh, of the candidate, of the nominees. So this time, actually, I am actually looking forward because I believe that the youth are going to make, definitely participate more than they did okay. in the last time. Okay. And that is actually what's going to improve uh, the selection of the persons who have been nominated for is cabinet that accurate? secretaries. And nobody wrote about the CS nominees. There, there was hardly any. There was nothing that was uh, was uh, that really was uh, that stood out. All right. Yeah. Uh, Mushma Mboy, you are a member I, of that I've committee. Been, you can tell us if there were, uh, but also in, <coughs> in closing, in the next thirty seconds. Yeah, it's true. There were there were there were few, very few memoranda against the, the, the nominees. So I think. So it made our, our life. So when people ask, we said that there wasn't. But this time, I okay. can tell you, mm. <laughs> it uh, will be exciting. In fact, in fact, some a lot of the questions some of us were, were shooting from the heat because we had uh, you know knowledge of some of these uh, participants. Yeah. So I think the, 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 the issue is right that uh, the public needs to, to, to get uh, to step forward. But there's a member of the public who has written and said, asked whether I've uh, sponsored a youth bill in parliament. Uh, and I think that myth needs to be demystified that uh, members of parliament don't constantly make laws because there exist laws about the youth, about finance, about all these things. So every member, we are 349 of us, cannot be giving laws about youth. Tomorrow everyone gives a law about economic, another one about education, another mm. one about health. No. We can our, also our run role, a chance of over-legislating. Yeah. Yes, it will be over-legislating. So what okay. we do is sometimes we make amendments, but we support those programs that are youth-related. Youth all right. And, and, and refuse uh, those things that we feel that can hurt the youth. So basically, uh, we, also, we also participate in, 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 in oversight. That means that uh, implementation is also, is also our role. So I think it's, it's important that public knows that not every member will come up with the laws about everything. All right. It doesn't make sense. All right. I'm just looking at uh, the vetting report that uh, your committee compiled uh, at the vetting of the cabinet secretaries that have now been dismissed. There were 23 submissions, affidavits, memoranda and uh, letters uh, making comments about various um, candidates, but also the candidates themselves were informed of the issues raised in those. But, but Sam, just a correction, not yes. all memorandum yes. that is brought, sent to parliament makes it to the committee. There is a vetting process to confirm the accuracy Mm. And if somebody has given a sworn affidavit, so if somebody right. just writes gossip and sends it, yeah. sometimes it may be, it yeah. will not be brought 
So you also have to protect the candidate so that not every Tom and Dick and Harry can bring lies against them. All right, th 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 that's fine. That's well noted. And I have to thank you, so, Deputy Speaker Gladys Boss, uh, Mushmua Robert Mbui, and Mushmua Beatriz Alachi for making time for us of this conversation. It continues. We'll continue to watch the events of the next few days and weeks. Up next is uh, Sporty Monday. Uh, Tijan Suila is uh, gearing to come here and celebrate uh, Spain uh, being the champions of Europe, <laughs> having, having beaten uh, the three Lions at 2-1. To to listen to their children in Eldoret when they close school and listen to the set pieces. Yes. Okay. So that you never blame them again. The music festival. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay. My name is Sam Gitugu. See you again some other time. Bye for now.